A reading from Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. Would you hear a word of hope for your life? Then Peter came to him, meaning Jesus, and said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and his children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you. Out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But at the same, that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then the fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When the fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then the Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay the entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, St. Andrews. Do you ever have an experience where you think, I've heard this before. In last week's scripture, Matthew opens the reading with, if a church member sins against you, here is how you handle it. Today we read Peter's follow-up question, if another church member sins, how often should I forgive for this? These two passages from Matthew 16 and 18 fit together seamlessly. Peter wants to know more about this concept of forgiveness, especially in the light of directives given from Matthew 16. Peter's question in the verses read from Matthew 18 is an attempt to quantify how much work, how much blood, sweat, and tears is this forgiveness supposed to take? He asks, how often should I forgive? Seven times? Peter thinks he is being generous. Offering the perfect number of seven times Jesus' rebuttal throws out the most extreme example possible. No, not seven times, 70 times seven. The Greek uses a designation that was so high and unreachable to illustrate Jesus' answer that forgiveness is beyond a number. Even in his generous example of seven times, Peter implies, how how far should I move to forgive? Because this is how far I am willing to go. We can identify with those limits because we all know persons who commit the same offenses over and over. We prefer cost-efficient relationships in which there is a better rate of exchange. Jesus follows the extreme example with a story. A king is settling accounts with slaves and one owed 10,000 talents. The king orders the slave to pay up or he, his wife, his children, and all his possessions will be sold. This makes us wonder, how much is our life worth? Or how much is the life of our family worth? 10,000 talents is an impossible amount worth many years of labor. There is no way a slave would owe this kind of debt, and no way a king would forgive this kind of debt. The story is designed to present the critical importance of relationships, and especially those within a church family. Of course, the slave begs for leniency and forgiveness. He promises to pay. You throw yourself on the mercy of the court, or in this case, whatever mercy the king might show. Matter of factly, Jesus reports that the king reverses course and forgives the debt. What will the slave do with the remarkable mercy he had been given? We don't have to wait long to see how disassociated the slave is from the miracle of forgiveness that he had been granted. As he leaves the king's quarters, he encounters a fellow slave who owed him a meager 100 denarii, a pittance compared to his own debt to the king. Remarkably, he seizes the contemporary by the throat and repeats the same threat he had just been given. Pay up or else. The fellow slave's 
please fall on deaf ears as the one who has been forgiven so much refuses to forgive even a little. He has his fellow slave thrown into prison, unable to recognize the hypocrisy of his attitude and actions. The king, hearing the incredible disconnect of his servant, called him back and turned him over to be tortured. While Jesus is never a proponent of torture, he was illustrating the extreme consequences of our failure to forgive. The parable ends as it began, with an extreme question that leads to an extreme story to emphasize that an unwillingness to forgive has extreme consequences. Failure to forgive indicates a blindness in recognizing first and foremost all for which we have been forgiven. Our forgiveness of others indicates our acceptance of God's forgiveness of us. God's grace is not a magic wand, for it is up to us to complete the transaction of that grace in the life we live and in our relationships with others. Peter asked, how often should I forgive? The answer is not in a magic number, but in how our lives reflect the answer every time we invoke the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. To follow the example of the merciful king who forgave a debt that could never be repaid is to incarnate, incarnate a deeper awareness that the indebted slave is each of us and the forgiving king is God. So now the mandate passes to each of us in this community. How often will you forgive? And now, whether we believe or whether we struggle, we are gods. Let us go out to welcome the doubters and the disciples around us. Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Let us go to embrace all who have been abandoned by the world. Whether we are brave or quake at times, we are the Spirit's. Let us go to encourage all we meet who struggle. May the God of hope fill you with the joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit now and always. Amen.